Hey there, welcome back guys. This is the last video in the three-part series for the Pavo Pico drone, which is right here. Um, if your drone looks like this, you want to bring it back to its original state because if you updated it and realized that the after the firmware update, it's now bricked or maybe you, something else happened and it became bricked or you want to do a reset. Uh, unfortunately, the reset button isn't underneath the drone. This is what the bottom looks like. The reset button is actually underneath the DJI 03 air unit so you're gonna have to take it apart and bring it back to its original state so that you can you know proceed with the rest of this video but um you want to basically bring it from looking like this right to actually like this see um so without any further ado let's get started okay so this is the Pablo pico this is the flight controller in there um, what you're going to see here, let me just get my tool. There's, um, it says a gold button right in there. That's the reset button, but we're not going to reset it just yet. We're going to plug it in. So this one is bricked. Okay. Basically it won't work. It won't update through the beta flight software. I'm going to plug one in here. Remember a USB-C data cable. Okay. Um, it could be anyone. It doesn't have to be this one. So it's plugged in. As you can see the light. Is just flashing green and usually when it works you have green blue etc you know there's only one light which kind of sucks right and you're like damn it's not working so now we're gonna go back into the beta flight software right we're gonna click uh, update firmware click update um, now we're connected as you can see uh, I'm gonna choose load firmware local because uh, the folks at Beta FPV said you should be able to flash it. Now remember, I said load from um, local, so it's gonna. I want it from my desktop. You take it from wherever you did. And remember, it's the hex file, the 2.4 gigahertz, as you can see. Now I'm gonna click open, and now I'm gonna click flash firmware. As you can see, nothing happened. You're like, what the hell, right? So maybe we put it into the DFU mode. So what you're gonna have to do is to put it into DFU mode is plug it out, but just plug it out a little bit. So you see how the green light is still flashing, right? See that? You'd want to plug it out and just leave it slightly in there. So the green light went off. See, no more flashing. All right, so we're going to put this back like that. And now we're going to put it into DFU mode. So this is the tricky part. You're going to have to press the button when you hear it, right? And then with your other hand, Plug in the USB-C cable without, now it's in. And you know you did it correctly when this green light is solid. See, remember before it was flashing? Well, now it's solid, okay? So now, see you see on the screen, it says exit DFU mode. Don't press it, but now you know you're in the mode that you're supposed to be in so that you can flash the drive um, on the flight controller to load the, the uh, new firmware, right? So we're gonna click Load local, choose the hex file, select open, and now you should be able to flash the firmware. Nope, didn't work. See that? And you can do this a hundred times, a million times, and nothing. Maybe occasionally it will work because I did get it a couple of times, but that's it. So now this is where you are and this is the fix. So, and then, and then they offered me 50% on a new one. Buy a new one, even though the first one you bought from us doesn't flash. Um, so the solution I found is there's another software that you can use. I thought Beta Flight was the only ones in, in the uh, market. So we're gonna plug it out and just plug it back in so it could find itself again. That, you don't have to do that. It's just something I just did. All right, so back in the screen, we're gonna quit Beta Flight. And there's another program. I'll leave a link in the description. It's called INAV or INAV. Okay. We're going to load it up. It'll open. This is the screen you see. So when you see this screen, um, so the, the drone is back to flashing, which is fine. That's what you want. Right. We'll just leave it here so you guys can see. And once the app is open, you're going to click, don't click connect. What you're gonna do is see that it looks like a little chip. You're gonna select that. Similar to beta flight, but this one's a little bit more fluid and it actually works. Don't select anything from here. You're gonna load firmware from local. Okay. And of course it's the hex file because this is the video for the hex. 
and I'm going to click open. I'm going to click flash firmware. And it'll take a little bit. See, it's erasing. Erasing is the first step. Uh, and, the, and the next step, which is great because you don't have to select it because in, I think in Betaflight, um, one of the options is to select erase. But in this one, I presume it's just doing it automatically. Like it just knows what it needs to do. They're like, you know what? Let's just erase all the crap they put on there and start fresh. You know, the so now it's flashing it. Um, it takes a little bit. I'm just going to scrub through here so that you guys can can uh, have the solution really quick. Okay, so there you have it. Firmware um, programming is successful. Okay, so now what you can do is we can quit the Inav app. And um, see, it says right there before you quit, let me just show you. See, it says USB device successfully closed, which is what you want to see. I close that out, actually quit it like I was going to. And now we open up Betaflight. And remember to keep the drone in the position that you want so that you can just see that it's in the, in, um, when you run it through the simulator, um, when it left is left, right is right, you know, and top is top and top is bottom. You want to keep it like this because when it loads in this position like that, it's going to load in that position on the screen and it's going to be hard to tell whether it's gone funky or if it's correct. So we'll leave it like that. All right. And we're going to open up Betaflight Configurator. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So now we're going to click connect. And voila, look at that. And now it works. See, left is left right is right, etc. So remember, I'll just give you a sample like this really quick. I'll show you. I'll quit the beta flight app. And then I'm going to load it again. And then click connect. And as you can see, it loads in the position that it's held in. So always remember that because you might forget that it's like this and think that like, oh my God, what's wrong with it? It should be, you know, this way. Um, and you pick it up like that. So I you always like to keep it front facing that way, you know, front and this way, you know, when it loads, it's going to load the correct way. So when I quit it, um, just, you know, food for thought. But for me, what the first time I had gotten this, um, this was up and then this was down and that's why it led, you know, I, one thing led to another to this thing being bricked after, um, the folks at Beta FPV just said, oh, we'll just flash the drive, you know, it should work. And just a little error right there, just click OK. And so remember, this is held like this. Let me just load up Betaflight and click Connect. I'm not sure what that's linked to, but Connect. And as you can see, now it's loaded like that. And now what you want to do is probably watch the other video, video number two, to configure this again so that it's ready to go um, by default because as you can see in the, um, where is it, receiver? If you scroll down a little bit, that's, you know, you wanna check that. And for modes, um, this is saved for me by default, but for you, it may or may not be there. But if it's not, watch the uh, video. And for ports, um, yeah, so this is not correct because this should be, we turn off three and then we activate number six. So anyway, but there's more to it. So go back to video number two. So everything's up and running again. And that's pretty much it. There you have it, guys. I hope this video helped you and you're better able to understand how to reflash the drive, uh, not using the Betaflight software, but I would use the Betaflight to reconfigure everything. Um, you know, moving forward, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. And I'll see you all next time.